it, it's been hard. Like I, I want anyone listening to this podcast, I want you to know like it's not all like fun and games. Like oh, you're making a cool doc, you got all this cool gear, you have access to these cool people. Like every single step of the way has been hard, and there's been times where it's like it's been painful. But you just push through that, and then yeah, some it gets it gets nice once you come out on the other side of that. Yeah, but you got to go through it. Lamar Griffin, welcome to the I Filmmaker podcast. How are you, buddy? I'm good, man. How you doing, man? Good, good. We finally were able to get this nailed in, get you in here to have a conversation. I'm excited, man. I'm, I'm super excited. I'm, I've been a big fan of the podcast. It's uh, it's crazy to actually be on here. I've listened to about every podcast that you've done, so it's, it's pretty cool, man. That's awesome, man, and I appreciate you being a listener, as I appreciate anybody listening to the show. I'm glad that the show is making an impact, not only to you, but to others around. And I mean, honestly, it's really, it's a lot of fun doing it. I really love it. I get to meet new people, how I met you, how I met a lot of different people. And uh, it's a lot, a lot of fun. Let's start off with documentary. You're working on a doc. I love it. I've seen snippets of it, small scenes of it. It's exciting. It's exciting. But before we get to that project, walk us really quickly, I'll say just a few minutes, talk us on how you got into video production. Yeah, man. I mean, that that story is always, I mean, I just always love like creating videos. So I played uh, football. I'm from Lakeland, Florida, uh, home of, you know, countless NFL players, just a city that I'm from just breeds NFL talent. So when I went to college to play football, you know, my goal was to play in the NFL, but I end up picking up a camera, just messing around, making music videos. Uh, I went to Arizona Western, so they had like a a thing where we could rent cameras and like use them. So we would always rent them and, you know, making little skits. I think that's back when like MySpace was around. So oh, man. we'd make a lot of stuff. MySpace. I'm telling you, man, back in- Love it. <laughs> Dude, back in the day. But I just I just always had a passion for it. And, and you know, as soon as I got done uh, with junior college, then I went to play Division three football. And that's when I realized, you know, when that time when you're an athlete, it's like, I'm not going pro. You know, it's that's just not going to happen. So I got my degree in political science, but I always stayed around the camera, always kept, you know, I love taking videos, love taking photos. And then long story short, I, you know, Craig Adams, I saw I saw some wedding stuff and I started shooting weddings and everything took off from there. I, I started with weddings. I still do weddings to this day. And, you know, just really, I love the camera from the beginning, but I, you know, the goal was to play football and go to the NFL, which I kind of completed. I'm just not playing in the NFL, but <laughs> <laughs> I mean, hey. I mean, if you, if you look at it half, half full, half empty, I kind of did complete the mission the that NFL. I set out. <laughs> <laughs> That's so good. Just, just not getting hit by nobody in there, man. That's awesome. Well, we shared that common goal, or at least that previous common goal. At one point, my goal yeah. was to make it to the NFL playing football. Um, I don't need, I don't even think I've shot. No, well, I've been to an NFL game. I've been able to go okay. there on assignment, not for the NFL, it was for something else, but it happened to, I had to okay. be at a Dolphins Patriots game, which is not a bad game to catch. But, um, yeah. Was that when Brady was, was Brady the quarterback? Brady oh, was yeah, the quarterback. That was probably nice. Yeah. This was a, a couple <laughs> years ago, two, three years ago. I okay. think, uh, yeah, Brady was a quarterback may have been his last year as a quarterback. Uh, 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 in New England but anyways yeah that was a goal of mine and then you know you know reality check came in <laughs> and um, yeah no I, I, I fell in love with this world this industry I just loved it so all right so now you're in video production how many years now six years man so I, I'm a, I'm actually a I'm actually the the epitome of a hybrid shooter, man. Uh, Jason Vong, I, I like his YouTube. Like he always like I'm a hybrid shooter. Like that is me also to the T. I mean, I do photo at the highest level for the NFL, different brands, different companies, commercial. Mm. Then I do video at the highest level for the NFL, for different brands, for different companies. So I mean, I really do photo and video. I I like to think at the same level for some of you know the biggest brands and companies in the world. There you go and trying man you're working on a documentary right now for how many years 
So I've been working on this doc for three years, uh, Man on a Mission, uh, starring Shaquille Barrett and his wife, Jordana Barrett. Uh, been, we've been working on it for about three years. Uh, we, you know, it's a, it's been a very fun ride because we didn't know when we first started it, it wasn't a documentary. And that's the same thing I said when uh, I talked to the NFL. We didn't set out to make this uh, what it has become, but it, it's turned into something that's really, really cool. That's amazing. That's amazing. It actually reminds me of this uh, documentary, Making a Murderer, on Netflix. It's a docu-series, actually. Okay. Have you seen it or no? I got to check. No, I, I, I must say, I, I've, I've, I've strolled past the previews, but my wife never lets yeah. me watch anything that's remotely scary. <laughs> uh, no, it's, it, I mean, it's it's like a murder mystery type of documentary, but it's not like a mystery. It's, it's, it's really <laughs> fascinating. It's really, really fascinating. Probably one of the best docu-series I've ever seen in my life. Um, Whoa. Yeah. I got to check it out. Yeah, docu-series. Docu-series. Um, gotcha. And, and and I saw what's the one that got famous most recently down here in uh, South Florida. Um, what's the guy with the crocodiles? I mean, not with the crocodiles. With the, oh, with the uh, lions. Yeah, with the tiger. The tiger. Uh, tiger, tiger, tiger King. King. Yes. Yeah. And my, yeah, man, that, that thing one, was shot. You could, that, that thing was shot a long time ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so if, I've seen that one. I think making a murder personally is better. Um, oh, but yeah. anyways, making a murderer started with a couple of college uh, film students. They started filming it Crazy. over the course of a very long time, just capturing all this. You know, can you imagine having to go skip, go through all that footage? I think I don't know. I can't remember now. I saw it years ago, but I I want to say they did like 10, 10 episodes, ten episodes in this docu series, and oh. Just incredible. Yeah, that, that, Just incredible. I gotta check it out. Incredible. Highly recommend it. But anyways, I'm saying it reminds me of sort of your path. You've been capturing this thing for three years. Have when you started this, you've been in the industry for three years. Just a few years in, and you just started shooting this story. Yeah, man. So when I when I actually me when me and Shaq started working together, I didn't work for the NFL. I me and Shaq uh, formed a relationship, and I was working for him directly. So capturing content, uh, he had just left the Denver Broncos. Uh, I live in Denver. This is where my wife is from. But of course, I'm from Florida. So when he found out he was going to the Tampa right. Bay Buccaneers, I reached out to him, and you know, he Shaq's not a flashy guy. Like he. He didn't want like pictures and videos. He like he didn't want what I was trying to give him. But, you know, I talked to him and told him how I could benefit him. And, and same thing with me. I told him up front, I'm still learning and figuring things out and getting better and growing. So, he, he you know, he pretty much took a chance on me and let me create with him. And, you know, that led to, you know, where we are now. Now I work for the NFL in the Tampa market and in the Denver market with like actual NFL employee. But I still also run my business and brand where I work with players individually. So, it's definitely uh, transformed. That's fantastic, man. And yeah, dude, that opportunities like that don't come around very often. And it's so cool that yeah, you were able to be dialed in and notice when a good story is in front of you and really stick through it because to stick to, to have the motivation, to have the encouragement and a desire to continue shooting something that you've been doing for three years. Nobody has seen it. You haven't seen any return on this project that you don't even know if there is going to be a return on this project that exactly to have, dude yeah, exactly to have, you know that that i would say that's gutsy that's risky that is <laughs> and you know what there's no other way to describe it there really isn't any yeah. project that you take that is there's it's an investment that you take and yeah a big you one you don't know how this is going <laughs> to turn out but it's a passion project slash I don't even know what else to describe it. That's awesome. Yeah, me, me, me neither, man. Me neither. I, I really couldn't have imagined myself. Like I said, I listen to your show and I listen to the people that are on here and the things that they've done, and it inspires me. I know some people try to compare themselves to people, and I'm like, there's no way you can do that because I'm, I'm not in, you know, like I listen to the show and I just try to take bits and pieces from everyone and, and learn. And even with me, if anyone's listening to this, like I didn't start out to make a doc. And then, then I wanted to make a short doc, but now it's a feature doc. Like it just kept transforming, but I was dialed in. I learned every single, you know, piece of information and I watched every video and I actually went out and did it. So it's really trial and error, but just really seeing it through and sticking with it and, you know, making sure it got done the correct way. And 
you know that's thanks to like like your show uh classes that i watch i i was in mark bone's documentary uh filmmaking oh, course amazing as man. soon as mark yeah man as soon as mark bone put that thing out and people were like it's 500 dollars. i'm like well you got to think if you pay 500 dollars for you know his knowledge and learn anything it's worth it. So sometimes you got to pay money for things that are valuable. And, you know, I, and like I said, I took, I took bits and pieces from that course and, and a lot of it, you know, I, I had already knew, but some of the bits and pieces right. really helped get me to the next level. So, I mean, that's really all you can do is learn and try to keep growing and evolving. Yeah. Big shout out to Mark Bone, the art of documentary. Yeah, man. That course is fantastic. I purchased it myself. I actually, yeah. before he, I think it was like a week before he announced it. I was already interested, but I had him on my show. I had him on the podcast. That's how I heard about it, dude. Like, I mean, this is coming full circle. I literally heard about, I didn't know who Mark Bone was until I, but I listened to your podcast before I found Mark. Yeah. Then I heard him on your show and that's how I, so, you know, Mark, you know, shout out to you. Like I literally, you know, <laughs> There you go. I got to call Mark and ask for commission or something. No, but no, <laughs> Mark is putting out some fantastic <laughs> stuff and he deserves everything. No, Mark, I, I, I discovered his YouTube channel. I saw the amount of the incredible amount of knowledge that he's pouring out there. And I figured, man, if he's pouring this much knowledge, what can a course that you pay for have? You know, like there, if this is how much stuff is here, I can't imagine how much stuff would be in his course. So that's, you know, I, I went in and I was one of the early birds as well. Um, I was there from when it started and uh, super awesome to see how it's grown and he's really like taken off with that. Yeah, but, dude, he's the real deal, oh, man. Absolutely. And so your film, uh, again, kudos to you for sticking through it and continuing to work hard on this project because that's rare. That's not normal. And people don't understand that this is not an overnight success type of deal. People catch these famous documentarians, these famous artists at the peak of their career or when they make it big, but they don't see all the work that has gone behind it. It's funny because I'll, I'll make a, uh, you know, I'll make a post and, you know, with the FX9 or whatever, you and I have spoken a lot about the FX9. Um, and a lot of people would, would comment like, ah, I forgot what it was. I say something about I'll like positive about the camera and then they'll come back and says, yeah, well, well, when you have money, you can easily get afford to get stuff like that. I'm like, man, where were, Dude, where it, were you 10 years ago when I had nothing, you know? So it's, it, uh, it's unreal, man. <laughs> and I got, I got a little story about that. Parker, Parker Wallback is someone that I learned a lot from on YouTube mm. and I, I, I haven't, I haven't got the chance to tell him, but I really want to tell him. I remember I used to watch his videos and, and I thought that in my mind, but he used to reiterate just how you just said, like, I didn't start with this. And most people can't, like, they, they skip that part. Like, you just said it, too. I'm going to say it the exact same way. Like, I didn't start with the Sony A1, Sony FX3, Sony A7S3. And I still rent the FX9, which me and you, like, I should have bought the FX9. But I still, like, I didn't start with all this stuff. It took years yeah. and years of working. And I think you said it on your podcast at one point, and there's been a lot of people that said the same thing. If you can't grow in your business and get new gear and upgrade, then you're not doing business right. That's just a oh, fact. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> like, it's, it's nonsense to think otherwise. That's Listen, that's just not – forget about our industry. This is just economics 101. You got to be able to grow. You have to be able to make a profit. Anyways, I think we're getting way out of subject. <laughs> uh, we, <laughs> hey, we're, we're, we're rolling. Yeah, no, no, no. We're rolling with this. But anyways – Going back to your documentary, it's awesome that, you know, you, you were able to find this amazing story and it just turned out the way that it did. So walk me through that when I, I, I think you mentioned it uh, briefly earlier when you got acquainted with Shaq. Right. And you guys just started shooting together and just the story that was unraveling before you was just unreal. When did you do so? When did you determine you had gold here? I, not until not until probably right after they won the Super Bowl. So me and Shaq, we didn't decide to make this documentary until we both were on a boat after they won the Super Bowl on the boat parade during COVID. I kind of looked at him and he looked at me and was like, we should make that documentary because we had been talking about it before. And then just to go back to the beginning, to preface it, we didn't know any of this was going to happen because when me and Shaq started, he hadn't made the team yet. You got to think he had... Uh, a chance to go to the Buccaneers, but you still have to make the actual roster. Like he was there 
but you you know you got to make you're not the team. Guaranteed. Then you're not guaranteed anything in the NFL, man. No, no matter how much your contract is, no matter what the numbers say, um, you know, unless you have a guarantee on the contract. But you know, you could get hurt, and then all that changes. Shaq led the league in sacks in the NFL, and was he got placed under what's called a franchise tag. So if you know anything about sports, anyone listening, uh, some players like that. A lot of players don't, because he had done enough to prove that he deserved to get, you know, paid some money for his family. And, you know, it's really about providing security for his family. And he led the league in sacks and didn't win Defensive Player of the Year, which that's also another conversation we can have off, you know. But there were so many things where we weren't like, we weren't like, let's make a doc about this. Uh-huh. Like, I didn't want to make a doc about him leading the league in sacks. The story just kept unraveling, and then Tom Brady came. So it's like, okay, you know, that has nothing to do with Shaq's actual story. But it's like, well, when Tom came – People were like, can they win the Super Bowl? And I told my wife, I'm like, I think they can win it. Like, no joke. And then they won the Super Bowl. Like that, I mean, it's it was unreal to think about it. And then we had a parade, which was the second of its kind, like a boat parade during COVID. Like everyone came out in Tampa, and, and I was standing there with the FX6. I had just got the FX6, which it hadn't even been released. Sony <laughs> sent it to me, like to demo it. So I'm filming with the FX6, and I'm just like, this footage is crazy. And then Shaq's just like, yeah, man, you remember you're talking about that documentary? Like, we both just, like, were on the same page. And from that moment on, that's when it really started. You know, that's when he made an investment. Shaq's an executive producer in the doc. That's when I went out and started getting some other people to invest. And that's really where all the hard work and, you know, not hard work, but all the, the real structure, like getting a lawyer, making an LLC, like some of the things that, once again, I had no clue how to do because I hadn't made a doc before. That's when it all happened. Wow. We were on the boat, you know, ce- celebrating the championship. <laughs> Wow. That's yeah, like man. a dream story to have I'm been capturing you, that from before <laughs> it happened. Um, yeah. They were- how, how does it, I mean, I, in my experience, when you're following a story as opposed to telling a story that has already happened, that is done already, uh, in my experience, how do you know when to finish it? You know? What like you know? You don't know is, when the story ends. Do they win another exa- one? And it's it still has. You know what I mean? It still so like, has. I mean, how, <laughs> have you thought about that? Like, how is this story gonna end? Right? Is it, his oh, career's yeah, so, not so, over, so he's I, still going. Oh, not at, <laughs> so, not at all, man. He 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 had an interception a couple games ago. I mean, he had one. The first game he came out, he had one sack. Uh-huh. Second game. He had an interception, yeah. which he almost ran back for a touchdown. And in the documentary, it's funny. Give y'all a little tiny bit. He said, "I was gonna." He's like, "I want to play good this year." I mean, if you start the season with a sack and interception, I think he's doing what he said he was actually going to so do. It looks like the story's still <laughs> going. Yeah, man, but we we are finished with the doc. I, I can tell you that we're finished with the doc. We're in post production, so the only thing we have to do now is uh, color and sound and distribution. And then uh, for anyone listening, if you don't know, uh, I don't. It's not easy to make a movie, right? It's not easy to do anything in our industry, but you can make a movie. But it's a lot harder to make a movie and then try to sell a movie to a a big network or a Amazon Prime or a Netflix or sell to any dang one if we're being honest. Like, <laughs> sure, sure. No, I can't imagine. Um, I usually when I'm involved in a project I, like that, it's somebody else doing it. It's not me doing it direct. Yeah, but yeah, it, it's on me, man. I'm a first time film director, so it's a uh, it. This journey has been, you know, I I shot I shot most of this by myself. I learned audio. I I learned lighting. Like, I really. It, you know, this project has been, like you said, it was it's a passion project, yeah. but there's money invested into this thing. This is a real living, breathing creature that, you know, I have people that have given money for this sure. that expect that money back. <laughs> How much pressure do you feel on that part? You know, I, I, I don't feel that much. Okay. I, I really, I let, I, I let it, uh, I let it motivate me, but the story is amazing. And, and if I just stick to that, the story that we have isn't going to change no matter, you know, what Shaq does tomorrow his story and Jordana's story that we made in the doc is original. And I think it's something that people can, you know, hold on to. Yeah. And I did the best ability, you know, I did the best uh, job I could do capturing that lighting wise, sound wise. Then I have a, uh, my editor, his name's Riley Clinton. Okay. He won an Emmy. Uh, he won an Emmy with the documentary he did with Tim Howard, legendary American uh, goalkeeper. So I have, I have an amazing editor. He's also one of my, uh, one of my close friends, but He's a professional at the highest level, and you know we're bringing in professionals, and you know we're just trying to do this the right way. Sure. But again, I'm a first-time director trying to make the doc and sell the doc, so 
it's it hasn't been easy at all to say the least gotcha. <laughs> no no no. i can't imagine any nothing is um but dude you're doing a phenomenal job i love the passion behind the project so i mean do you have any plans on what to do after let's say it's done it's been released it's been distributed it's successful do you have any ideas of something to follow up that follow up with that or I do, man. I actually have my my second doc is uh so we're we're actually trying to get funding for it now. I'm going to be going uh, with Team USA bobsled, uh, an Olympic athlete. Her name is Asia Evans. We're going to be following her story. She retired uh, from being an Olympian. She had won uh, a medal with the Olympics. She came back. And now she's going she's going for gold this year and for the Winter Olympics. So I'm gonna be following her story and. We're going to make a documentary about her story and then, you know, her, her chase for the gold and, you know, a couple other little things that I don't want to give away yet. But gotcha. the follow up doc is, you know, kind of in, in the works as well. That's fantastic, man. So you're 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 diving in head first in the world of documentary. So you're in there. You know, it's, did you did you, <laughs> I'm did you try, I'm was trying. There a moment where you're like, how did I get into the documentary? <laughs> how did I become a documentarian? <laughs> <laughs> that moment's now <laughs> because i'm because i mean because you know you guys listening i still i still work i work part-time for the nfl so uh i do content every sunday you know th this sunday i'm shooting the broncos versus the ravens i still shoot weddings uh me and my wife do weddings together okay. i i'm shooting a commercial i'm shooting a commercial tuesday for uh bet fred sports um i you know i i still do bills, all these yeah, man, seriously. <laughs> you got to pay bills. But the moment that you realize you could do documentary full time when you have a nice, healthy budget Ooh. that could pay for you, your family, whatever it is that you need, just focus on this one documentary. That'd be a good day. Now, two or three document. <laughs> There's going to be a time where you're going to be working on two or three, four documentaries at once. And all you got to do is show That'd up. That'd be wild. That you got. I've worked with people like that before. I've worked with uh, 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 Billy Corbin. Billy Corbin. Okay. Uh, he's the director of, of Cocaine Cowboys, probably one of the, you know, that's probably one of his most famous works that he's done. Yeah. Um, I was the DP for his, uh, one of his docs for at least half of it. And then I had to sort of walk away, uh, for specific reasons. But right. anyways, I was able to work with him and I noticed he was working. I was just, that was just one of the, I think three documentaries that he was currently working on at the time. And all he did was show up. That's nuts. I had a, I had to direct a small crew of about six people. Um, I was a DP, so all these uh, he was the director. Obviously, I was a DP, but like I was there directing, you know, the gaffers, the grips, the, the AC, or whatever. But um, and uh, I couldn't imagine. I, I I just couldn't even imagine being able to. Yeah, I mean uh, that's that's the goal, right? I, you got to set I, goals. Yeah, you can't well, just dream about. Yeah, but stuff. I I think it's easy if you get rid of the cameras, meaning you don't have to worry about. Yeah, like. You know you want to shoot. You expect that your DP knows what he's doing, correct? So you don't have to oh, worry course, about that. Definitely. It's like, hey, DP, we're shooting on FX9s. Make it happen. I want shallow depth. Make it happen. That's it. That's all you got to say. They handle the rest. Uh, and that's basically yeah. how he how he handled that. And audio, obviously, audio knows what they're doing. When you have a budget, a healthy budget, to pay for the shoot days, to pay for your salary, to pay for everything, people are going to hire you. All you got to worry about is a story which is the most important aspect yeah. of any documentary. I love it, man. But that's you, you're totally right. And mm -hmm. you totally, you totally right, man. And even like now, like think I'm, I'm all those people for this doc. Oh, I am the DP. I am the, the lighting less, person. Guy. The less you the have to do, the more you can focus your brain power on the story. And yeah. you can see how that can that's now, true. now you have a good one or two days a day to work, to think about this story, another couple of days to think about the other story. And you, you can really wrap your head around story and less around gear and all that stuff. You know, you have an assistant to, to help you with all the travels, you know, Hey, we got to be on this day, this place, this day on that place, that day, you make it all happen for you. You know, and I've, and I've, I I've just it. seen, that's how he works. That's how like these documentarians, that's how they work. And it's, it's a dream. It really, really is to worry about yeah. nothing but story because you, your stories are so dang good that people will pay you that much to to create them that's the plan man i i hope i can keep doing it. i mean not hope i mean i i plan to keep doing this for a while yeah, you my know, recommendation you man, learn. if you love it if that's your passion if that's what you want to do just do it don't wait for them to pay you for that that's going to come just do it because you know what let's say this documentary that you're shooting right now it it, it brings no fruit it brings nothing let's say you cut even Everybody gets their money back, et cetera. 
um, you know what? You gained a lot of knowledge. You gained a lot of experience. Exactly. You learned a lot of what not to do <laughs> on your next one. Um, I think one of the most uh, famous quotes, I don't know if it was Michael Jordan that said it. I'm pretty sure it was. I keep hearing it from him. That, you know, how, MJ. MJ, yeah, man. He he counts how many how many uh, times he's failed, right? Like he's missed this many shots. Uh, he's been trusted to take the game winning shot like 50 times and only like I and and I failed like 35 times and all this stuff yeah I, he says I continued to fail and fail and fail and that's why I, su- I succeed because all he learned was I how many that. times he not to do it you know so dude that that resonates with me a lot because like like we were like we were talking uh off camera before like it, it's been hard like I, I want anyone listening to this podcast I want you to know like it's not all like fun and games. Like, oh, you're making a cool doc. You got all this cool gear. You have access to these cool people. Like, every single step of the way has been hard. And there's been times where it's like, it's been painful. But you just push through that, and then yeah, some it gets it gets nice once you come out on the other side of yeah. that. But you got to go through it. Yep, yep, yep. No, and it's only until it bears fruit until you really see the amount of. I don't want to say blood, but sweat and tears that went into all this <laughs> yeah. stuff. I mean, unless you pricked your finger or something on a tripod or something, but um, <laughs> hey. hey, it happens. But no, seriously, I, I mean, there's it, so much work that goes into this. It's not just point and shoot. It really isn't. Yeah. Um, but hey, listen, you're doing an amazing job. Super proud of you. And I cannot wait to see the full edited piece. Uh, we'll definitely be promoting it. Yeah, we got to get you out to Tampa. We we got to get you. I got to when, uh, whenever we uh, hopefully they let me get theatrical rights. Which you uh, if you got this, these are all there's all so many different ways like to be able to show my doc in a movie theater. There's things that you have to go through yeah. and fees and hope hopefully we can show it in Tampa. That's the plan for us to have a big premiere. You know, invite some of the players out. Shaq will come out and we all watch man, it I'll together. You there. know, barring that's only a few. Hours I would love to have you there, man. We'd we'll love, we'll love to have you and Chris there, man. Don't forget, you you bring Chris on I'll down, too, I'll bring Chris man. with me, too, then. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, dude. Well, thanks for coming on the show. Let everybody know where they can find you. And I don't know if you have a website for the film yet. No, yeah, yeah, that's so we're work, we're working on all the marketing okay. now. Now that we got now that we got the the thing put together, now the Instagram, the website, the the, the presets, the design, right. like once again, all this is you know all this is coming now. So hopefully we can we can get it all done, but. If you guys want to connect with me, my uh, Instagram is Lamar Griffin Films, Lamar with the E. Um, I, I get back to everyone. I, I started a Patreon because so many people ask me for advice. So if you want to check that out, that's one thing. But if you DM me, I usually will get back to you. I just can't. I mean, as you guys know, I work part time for the NFL. I can't answer. How did you start working for the NFL? I get that 30 times a day. And it's like <laughs> it, there's no like straight answer. Like a lot of years of not, not being good. Then I finally got good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Listen. When your work shows it, they'll find you, you know? Yeah. All I, all I always recommend <laughs> people is just put your stuff out there, man. Just put it out. Worst thing that's going to happen is the same thing that's happening right now. Nobody's calling you. So <laughs> that's exactly. the worst thing exactly. that could happen. Exactly. I'm telling you. But you learn. You learn and you keep going, man. I appreciate you having me on the show. Like I said, this was uh, this was on my bucket list like a year ago. I, I, didn't t- I never told you that. <laughs> oh, nice. It was on my bucket list, of, yeah, to to be on this show, so I, I can scratch that there you off. Go. Now. You can scratch that <laughs> off. Perfect. We're gonna be putting all the links to your, your handle, to uh, your website, your Patreon, in the show notes for this episode. Lamar, thanks so much for coming on the show. Appreciate you, man. You guys take care.